broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the South Carolina Farm Bureau, online at scfb.org. And by the Columbia Metropolitan Airport, online at columbiaairport.com. And by Time Warner Cable, online at timewarnercable.com. And welcome back to this week at the State House. The Senate continues to meet. The legislative session kind of slowed down this week. The South Carolina House of Representatives, uh, they've taken a furlough, so they're not here at the Capitol. Technically today, as you can see, we're not at the Capitol on a different set because we've got a different program. But over in the Senate, the Senate is involved in cleaning up bills. The Senate uh, will take up the appropriations bill starting next week, and that could take a week. Chairman Leatherman says they hope to get out in a week. It may take longer. So those are the things that are occurring here in Columbia. But one of the things that occurs in Columbia is about generations. It's about education, and that's what we've got on tap for today. But first of all, I want to thank, of course, uh, the South Carolina Educational Television Network for the production of the show. We want to thank the Columbia Metropolitan Airport, Time Warner Cable, and the South Carolina Farm Bureau for making this broadcast possible to you. And of course, I'd be remiss if I did not welcome my friends in 518 of the Block Building. Uh, we've got an educational show today, and I know y'all are really going to enjoy what you're going to see. This is, of course, um, Older Americans um, Month in, in, here in South Carolina. That's about senior power and about generations, and that's where we're headed with this particular show. In the Lieutenant Governor's Office, we have what we call the BG Time Awards. And what that is, is that's bridging generations through technology, information, media, and engagement. And we have two uh, paths that we kind of follow on that. One, we start with uh, Bridging the Generation uh, Award, and that's with eighth graders. We started out last year. We had over 110 schools are now involved in the competition. The competition has become fierce, the engagement. It's great to see the young people involved in in writing about someone from another generation and visiting with them and bringing that to light in an essay. And we got a winner this year, a real winner. And it's my pleasure to, uh, she comes from Johnston Edgefield Trenton Middle School. And uh, she is the 2013 state winner. Her name is um, Elena Cadell. Alana it is, isn't it? And Alana, Charleston Knees, I'll, I'll blame it on that. Alana, it's great to have you on the program. And if you will, tell our viewers um, what your essay is about, what you tried to do. Honestly, I just tried to connect my generation with my Nana's generation. So you sat and visited with her about the comparison, where, how she came up through life, I guess, huh? I came up with a few questions and asked her those, and she answered them with very good answers that I could turn into a good paper. Well, you turn it in, you, you're very modest because you call it good and it was excellent. It was well written. It, uh, for anybody who, who reads it, it's like a, a trip back in time. Thank you. And you feel like you're there. So for the person that is reading it, they're visiting with you and, and that takes great skill. Thank you. Well, we got an award for you and here it is, the plaque, it's got your name on it. Uh, I know the folks back in Edgefield County got to be extremely proud. We're proud for you. Okay. Please accept this and um, keep doing the great work. Thank you. All right, I told you that we do it on two levels, and we do. The other part is where we uh, partner with um, uh, Central Carolina Community Foundation, the South Carolina Scholastic Press Association, and the School of Journalism at the University of South Carolina. This establishes a college scholarship. What does this involve? This involves writing. It also involves, though, engaging in media, presenting some sort of multimedia component to the essay. Again, it's journalism involved in bridging the generations. And uh, 
It's a $1,000 scholarship for first place. It's a $750 scholarship for second place. If third place is a $500 scholarship. And then the teachers and advisors have been so involved in this that uh, we've done a smaller cash prize for those in the winning in that. This year's winner, she's right here on the set with us, Brittany Miles. She's a student at South Point High School in Rock Hill, South Carolina. It's good to have you with us. It's good to be here. Um, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Secondly, I'd ask you this. Please tell us about your story that you wrote and you produced your video. Well, my story is about my grandmother. I call her Welly. It's short for Abuela. And she's absolutely beautiful inside and out. And she's had a very exciting life. And she's still living. She's very um, youthful still. And the story is basically about her growing up in the tropics in Panama and coming back to the United States with her husband, who she met on a uh, marine base in Panama. And um, she's traveled a lot in the United States and just about living here and living her life to the fullest. And I'm very thankful to have gotten to explore her story through BG Time. Well, we're going to show you the video here today because it's an uplifting video. And one of the great things that impressed us about it is that it, um, it leaves you with the sense that uh, it's not over. There are greater things to come. But uh, one of the things we don't have to check today, but we do have the certificate from the Lieutenant Governor's Office we want to present to you. We're getting ready to, uh, ETV has been kind enough to get this video ready so the people of South Carolina can see. Please accept that. Thank and you. congratulations on a great job. Thank and with you. that, we're getting ready to watch a great video. Habrías que enseñarle al amor a hacerlo mismo que tú. tell you my childhood was something that you don't see here or, or any other place I mean I had the greatest childhood but my dad always took care of us very well my mom never worked and uh, I was still at home when I was 23 years old when I got married You learn to always be yourself and don't pretend to be something you are not because you pay for that. Oh, we've been in so many places. Um, my husband spent 30 years in the Marine Corps and that, that, uh, to me that was happy, happy days. We, we, uh, the first thing I, I saw was beautiful South Carolina, and I learned to like it later because it was kind of different, uh, very historic, and, and I went back to Panama. From Panama, came back to, to North Carolina. Virginia, I like it a lot. From there, we went to California. Uh, we got orders from North Carolina and Camden, June. From Camp de June, we stayed there about a year or two, and then we got orders from Hawaii. Came back to North Carolina. In North Carolina, we were so lucky that we got orders from Panama. was outside and some little kids started yelling for their mother, Mama, here's a beatnik. Because I, I guess he never seen a brown person before and he thought I was dirty. <laughs> That's what I figured.
So life is short and life is swift. So live your life according to your feels, links. <laughs> And after that great video, we still got a great program ahead. Now we're going to go to First Lego League. Probably you'd say, what in the world does that have to do with Oldest Americans Month? What does it have to do with bridging the generation? It's, it's amazing. And um, uh, Renee Beard with the Office on Aging, she's the one that introduced us to this and this great use of technology and innovation. Young people again involved in helping um, uh, Older Americans solve problems, so to speak. Um, tell us about it. Uh, let, let me just go. I, I got a few questions. Okay. First, wh what is the Lego League okay. so that our viewers will know what we're talking about? Okay. Well, First Lego League is actually a partnership between the First organization and the Lego company. And First was really trying to find ways to um, bring something exciting to students um, across the nation and really now around the world uh, to find ways to solve things using science and technology and engineering and math. And so what they ended up doing is partnering with the uh, Lego company to provide an after school program that will allow these students to take everyday situations and using Legos to build robots and engineering type software so that way they can start figuring out um, and taking that type of approach to be solving everyday problems. So every year the first Lego League puts out a type of challenge that has to do with something that's going on, um, some type of current event or something that's going on in their communities where they can apply these types of things that the first Lego League is trying to teach these students and allowing them to use these uh, types of technology, the software, engineering type things to be able to solve and approach those types of problems and hopefully instilling good values to these children and being able to take this throughout their lifespan and uh, being applied hopefully through everything that they do. Well, and let me ask you, mm -hmm. this year right. it's involved now with what, bridging generations, isn't it? It was. It was called Senior Solutions. And so what happened is they got a, um, their challenge this year for Senior Solutions is students uh, all across here in South Carolina actually had to go and find a senior partner and interview them and talk about different types of things that would be a challenge for seniors or what are some of the things that they face. And they had to sit there and have this conversation, really get to know them and come back as a team and go, okay, well, what can we do about it? And so they had to have these conversations and come up with some type of innovative solution that could have been any type of development of a product, a type of program, an idea. Really, the possibilities were endless. They really could do whatever they wanted to. But once they developed this idea, they had to go share it. They had to start talking to people and doing these types of things and really talking to the community and really being involved one-on-one -on -one with um, our seniors and our caregivers and professionals who work with these seniors on ways that they could really interact and help make life easier for them. Um, one of the things that really struck me is the way that they talk to them is um, First Lego League said what they wanted to get at is how can we keep seniors independent, engaged, and connected. And honestly, that just floored me. I was like, wow, that's exactly <laughs> what we do. <laughs> what we do at the Office on Age. That's exactly right. Every day, what can we do to help keep seniors independent, engaged, and connected? And so, sir, while you were out on your Faces of Aging tour, there were 3,000 students right here in South Carolina going out trying to accomplish the exact same things by inter uh, interviewing these seniors and finding out what are their problems. So you thought it was just you and our crew on the road, and we had 3,000 more students across South Carolina doing the same thing. Same thing, helping us. That's exactly right. And they actually ended up, um, First Lego League is actually worldwide now. So while we were doing it here in South Carolina, thinking it was just us, there are actually over 200,000 students around the world doing, doing that exact same project and working on this as well. Well, they have advisors, and we have one of them here, Beth Collins. She's uh, one. She's helped them. She's been with the team. Um, in fact, the state champions. Yes. <laughs> now that was competition statewide, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about where y'all are from? Well, our team is from Anderson, South Carolina. We represent the Anderson Homeschool Association, and we have students from fifth to eighth grade. All right. Um, I think they call themselves the Golden Oldies. They do call themselves the Golden Oldies. <laughs> All right. I'm going to introduce them. I believe I've got here their names. Uh, Michael Collins, Carrigan Hovey, Noah Hovey, James Conard, uh, Samuel Ott, Matthew Wortham, 
and Elliot Wright. I haven't left out anybody, have I? I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you, I'll come back and I'd like to talk with you about what they did, but we're going to go to the skit right now so our viewers can see Great. this state championship team. I take these pills for back pain, arthritis, unicornophobia, and I can't even remember what else. Speaking of not being able to remember things, I can't even remember how to get back home to Graceland. Wait, man. We can help. We're the Gold, Gold, Golden Oldies Lager Vox Team number 373. And for the last eight months, we've been doing research and meeting with experts to investigate problems seniors have. We think we have something that can help you. Here, try this. Oh, well, I'll just go sit here, eat whatever this is, and listen. Great. We have a presentation to show you what we've done, what we've learned, and how it can help seniors like you, Elvis. Take it away, Kerrigan. Thanks, Michael. Over the summer, we collected all kinds of information that, of problems that seniors have. Once the official FLL challenge was announced in September, we met with an expert, Mr. Marshburn, franchise owner of Home Instead, a senior adult care company, and he helped us focus on memory or later problems. He mentioned that seniors have difficulty remembering to eat, take pills, and even sometimes remembering how to get places or get home. Just like you, Elvis. Hey. Next, we took a tour of the Legacy, an independent living center for senior adults, and decided to make the Legacy residents our senior partners. So we surveyed them and confirmed that memory is a significant problem that interferes with their ability to stay independent, engaged, and connected. So that's how we chose memory as our problem. We started out focused just on the problem of seniors forgetting to take their pills. As we continued to research, we learned in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry that up to 75% of seniors either forget to take their pills, take too much of it, or take it at the wrong times. But we wanted to not just help seniors remember to take their pills, but we also wanted to help them remember everyday things too. We learned that flaxseed contains omega-3 fatty acids, which in recent studies show can help with memory loss and can even help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Flaxseed is a natural source of polyunsaturated fatty acids, which in recent studies show is healthy unlike saturated fats, which are found in other foods like red meats and butter. These healthy fats are used in the brain as a protective covering for cells and neurons which carry messages to the brain. Several studies have been published over the last year's study link between eating more foods with a healthy omega-3 fatty acids and improved memory and attention. Putting these two things together, remembering medications and improving memory, we have designed something unique that dispenses pills without the need for a caregiver to pre-sort them and grinds and dispenses flaxseed to improve the senior's memory. This will help seniors remember not just to take their pills, but also help with overall memory to memory to keep them independent, engaged, and connected. Once our team started talking about this idea, I went home and started drawing up designs. The design for the Memory Mate Medication Dispenser is the six revision. Three significant features include a double release system that helps prevent errors in dosing, a built-in flaxseed grinder, and the capability to sort pills for you. Once Samuel completed the first design, our coach scheduled a field trip to the Southeastern Institute of Manufacturing and Technology where we met with Mr. Roach, the director, and talked a lot about prototyping, producing, and manufacturing a new product. He gave tips to Samuel on his design and estimated that it would cost $20,000 to prototype and might sell for around $300. He also introduced us to the provisional patent. After our trip to SIMT, we researched on a patent website for any machines that might be like ours, but there were no other pill dispensers like ours that would also spec flaxseed. So based on Mr. Roach's advice, we met up with Dr. Joseph Guy, a patent lawyer at Perkins Law Firm, where we talked a lot about the provisional patent and what our claims would be. We are continuing to work with him on that. While all this was going on, we started a blog to show what we were learning. We also created this skit to share with our senior partners at The Legacy. Finally, we started sharing with others in our community. Hey, I just remembered how to get back to Graceland. When's the next flight to Tennessee? And would you say you put in that yogurt? And I want one of those memory mate medication dispensers. Well, guess we're done here, but before we go, we gotta say one more thing. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank, thank you very much. much. All right, uh, that was great. That was great, and 
you know, Older Americans Month, we, we talk about bridging generations. So um, I, they, they have a robot, is that correct, in, uh, in this uh, LEGO League uh, competition? They do, and actually to tie in with the Senior Challenge theme, the robot interacts with models on the table that are sometimes hobbies seniors might have, sometimes challenges seniors might face. So even the robot portion was related to seniors this year. And they had to design that and, and, and compete. I mean, I, I just think it's incredible. All, all these young people engaged in this generational bridge and what we're trying to do. I, it, it was. Hey, you. It, yeah, well, the challenges <laughs> that um, Ms. Beth was speaking of, some of those things were really neat. Um, one of the ones that caught my attention that these robots had to face that uh, really kind of connected the children to look at, um, there was a balance board in the middle of their table. So they had to get their uh, robot to either climb stairs or to go up a ramp. And if they took the ramp, which of course would be probably the easier choice, yes. there was a gap between the ramp and the actual platform, which represents being able to carry over the threshold. So um, at our senior fun day this week, as we were helping seniors in and out of the, um, out of the uh, room where we were having all their activities, helping them get their walkers over the threshold and even or getting their wheelchairs over the threshold is a challenge that uh, seniors face. And we just saw it on Tuesday at our senior fun day. And um, so this robot had to figure out how to get up on this platform, either by going upstairs or taking the ramp and getting over the threshold. And then the ramp wasn't supported on both sides. And so the senior balance was represented through that platform in the middle of the board. So the robot had to get up there and hopefully get in the center so they didn't fall over and fall off the board. Good night. They put a lot of thought into these they things. They sure did. <laughs> Uh, what do you think are uh, some of the benefits South Carolina will gain from this type of intergenerational project? Well, one of the things that we're really hoping is that, um, and I actually challenged when I got to speak with them at their uh, state championship and talking to all the teams that went up there, and um, also being talking to their mentors and the teachers and the volunteers, is to hopefully continue a Senior Solutions Challenge. Uh, you know, in our office, there's 35 of us, and we go out and talk to as many people as we can, but we can't do it alone. And so if we have and really engaging our communities and our students and our parents and our teachers and our volunteers to get involved and find out what are these senior issues that people need help with and help us make a difference. And it's gonna take all of us working together and by this same type of first Lego League challenge out there by bringing awareness um, and finding ways that not only can children commit and contribute to finding solutions, but also how our seniors and our loved ones can contribute to them as well. We know that seniors want to stay independent, engaged, and connected. So if there's a way that they can help engage and contribute something to the younger generations as well, I think that would help people uh, you know, boost self-esteem, find worth, find purpose, and staying engaged and connected and working with everyone across the board. Well, I mean, today we've seen some extraordinary uh, things. We've seen extraordinary essay. We mm -hmm. see multimedia presentation. Uh, we've had Alana and Brittany. Then we have this championship team. And, and, and I think this is what it's all about here in South Carolina. How do we take the talent and the resources we got in the state, bridge the generations, and give seniors an opportunity at those golden right. years? And uh, uh, this Lego thing, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I was, when you first came, I, I just, I said, Lego toys and, <laughs> and seniors and generational issues. And then, it, and then you see the extraordinary talent that these young mm -hmm. people have. I mean, a, the essay is like a, a trip in time. The, the videotape is an uplifting experience. And this is just, it's innovation, creativity, and uh, solution. Correct. Anything, Beth, you'd like to say about your team? Golden Oldies. We're heads of California to represent South Carolina at the oh, North. Really? We are the North American Open Championship uh, is May 16th, and we're headed there next Wednesday to compete again to represent the state. That is great, and I guess y'all will take uh, what we saw today is not really the actual robot, is it? I mean, the, the real one y'all have is. We keep him at home safe. Y'all keep him at home safe. <laughs> now, will he be going out to 
to the national. He will go to California, yes. And uh, and this is just one part of the Lego competition. Mm -hmm. There are four judging, four components uh -huh. to the competition. And so the students will present this skit, but they will also compete on the table that Renee so well described. <laughs> um, and then there are also two other categories that they compete in. One explains how they designed, build, and programmed their robot. And another requires that they illustrate their teamwork skills. And so there are four components to the competition, and this is really just one part of it. Well, it's um, all of it is just absolutely incredible. Um, uh, let me quickly ask you, we're about to wind down on the time in the broadcast. I wanted sure. to ask you about um, what's happening at SC Access. Could you tell the public very quickly what that's about? Sure. Well, just like with First Lego League, where one of the things that we're hoping will happen is building awareness to senior issues, um, we know that with funding and there's only so much we can do with the money we have, but information is the most powerful thing that we can offer anyone. And so knowledge is power and resources. So there is the SC Access website that's run through the Lieutenant Governor's Office on Aging. And anyone can go out there. Um, within the last year and a half, we've really overhauled the website, um, trying to make it more user friendly. Uh, I believe we actually have over 3,000 resources um, as actual companies, but there are actually over 13,000 programs and services for our seniors right here in South Carolina. And usually when I say that number, people fall out on the floor. I had no idea that there was that much available that could help our seniors or adults with disabilities or even their caregivers. And so in this one place on our website, people can go and start finding out who those resources are. And um, the number one thing I get from people is, especially when talking to seniors, well, I don't use that computer, so what can I do? Well, we, we laugh. We have a big red phone in the middle of our website, or you can call our office. We have what we call information and referral specialists. So that's someone you can actually pick up the phone and call, ask your questions to, and we help guide you to who are those um, resources in your community who can help find you the help that you need. Very good. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information available for us. There's not a lot, a lot of time <laughs> left for everything we want to get out. So um, very quickly, I want to ask you about senior power button, BG time buttons that you've got. We've seen the power of the young people here today. Uh, tell us very quickly what these um, senior power buttons are about? Sure. Um, senior power, I believe, was the theme for our Older Americans Month this, uh, this year. And so we had our buttons made up for senior power. So we promote everything that we've talked about is raising awareness across generations and things that they can do. So we are all proudly wearing our senior power button, bringing awareness. I've actually already had three people ask me what's it about. And um, so I get to promote all of our resources and things that we do just by and, having these here. And for us, what it's all about is we're out of time. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you'll tell your friends, see what these extraordinary young people can do and how they're bridging generations here in South Carolina. Thank you. We'll be back with another broadcast next week. Broadcast of this program is made possible in part by the South Carolina Farm Bureau online at scfb.com. O -R -G. and by the Columbia Metropolitan Airport, online at ColumbiaAirport.com, and by Time Warner Cable, online at TimeWarnerCable.com.